This one is called Oil Bible by Jay Wilburn. This is another one that may end up turning into a um, novella or novel uh, if I end up using the characters again. <clears throat> the congregation was fit to kill his uncle right by the pulpit of their church. Uh, Chase Gray stood as far off to the side of the stage dais at the front of the sanctuary, tucked back into the corner of the choir loft and the back of the and the back of the organ. Hold on, I'm gonna need to fix something already. So this isn't a reading, I'm gonna need to fix at least one thing. The congregation was fit to kill his uncle right by the pulpit of their church. Chase Gray stood as far off to the side of the stage dais at the front of the sanctuary, tucked back into the corner of the choir loft and the back of the organ as he could. That's a long sentence, but I think I'll just leave it. There was really nowhere to run, which might be a problem if the church decided Chase needed lynching too. He was right in the middle of this whole thing after all. Took back between. No, I, I don't want to do between. I want him in the corner. Now hold on a minute. Chase's uncle, Reverend Maurice Wood, shouted over the angry crowd that had been calling out amens just a moment ago. This man is telling lies. Lies, I tell you. Do not tolerate in your presence a blasphemer against the Holy Spirit. Deacon, Deacon Willard Early hesitated at that. Maybe he hadn't considered that Uncle Maurice might try to turn the outrage against him. He still held the receipt up in his grasp, but not quite as high and bold as before. Well, it was a photocopy of a receipt and invoice. Chase still had the original hidden in his room not that far away. Head Deacon Paul Granger moved to the front and held both his hands aloft as if trying to part the Red Sea. Even the even the other deacons appeared ready to join the mob if this spirit of discord were allowed to finally cut loose. Who would survive it? Hard to say. Chase wasn't sure what he might, what he wanted to happen, but he was ready to roll over the top of the organ and make a break for it. He was gangly, uncoordinated. He was a gangly, uncoordinated 14-year-old, small for his age, and it would be a big drop. He might twist an ankle and be done for. He just hoped Miss Ethel had vacated the bench before he went for it. No one would forgive him for hurting her. He might be beyond forgiveness already. All right, let me save what I got so far. Mr. Paul was looking right at him with his head turned, false teeth gritted and gleaming too white, looking back between his upraised hand, arms. You just couldn't listen, listen to reason, could you, kid? All right, I need another comma there. Yeah, so this is turning into an edit, not a reading. All right, it sounded loud and clear to Chase at the time, but with everyone making noise, maybe no one else heard the exchange. Exchange. Chase had made the mistake of going to Deacon Granger first with the evidence, but come to find out, the head deacon was in on it too. Chase had agreed to keep his mouth shut, but his uncle, the man who raised him and taught him to fear Jesus since the death of his parents, was planning another service at Stanbrook State Prison. This couldn't go on. Chase couldn't play the fool any longer. No more prison ministries, no more school assemblies, no more church tours with lies piling up to heaven like the Tower of Babel. If only his uncle had the sense not to put his name on the invoice, or if he hadn't made it all up in the first place. I'm sure there is an explanation for this that Deacon Early has failed to see. Uh, head Deacon Paul Granger was shouting o out over the crowd, mostly on his feet at this point. At that point, he has created anger and distrust by not seeking the truth first. We will look into this and resolve it, but that won't happen tonight. All of you, each and every one, has seen and experienced the miracles God has seen fit to reveal here. No misinterpreting. P no misinterpreted piece of paper can undo the evidence of your eyes and your hearts. We have lived an ongoing revival that has changed the soul of this town and country. It has turned eyes and hearts back to Jesus and God the Father. No man who knows the truth can deny that. Can I get a witness? No one wanted to be the first to say amen, not after what had been accused. They did mumble among themselves. The ones leaning forward and gripping the edges of the pews, ready to take action, rolled back to their heels and released their grips just a bit. That was something, though. Maybe the closest to a miracle this place was going to see tonight. 
Then Willard Early held up another piece of paper, this one not a photocopy. I'm not surprised in the least to hear Paul try to woo you back into compliance. I did investigate, and I found a second invoice for twice as much mineral oil in Mr. Paul Granger's name. He was in on it. I'm going to put a comma there. He was in on it, and they are looking to expand their operation of lies in the name of your whole, of our holy God. They are grifters. They are charlatans, false teachers. They are the ones using the Lord's name in vain. I have found the truth, and it is that these men are money changers, defiling God's house right under your noses this whole time. Paul started moving, moving then. Paul backed up until Paul started moving then. Then people, I'm sorry. I was about to fix something that wasn't broken. People started moving then. Paul backed up until he bumbled his scrawny butt against the altar hard enough to shake the entire pulpit. Uncle Maurice, still the pastor in name of Groveland Southern Baptist Church of Denton, moved forward instead. He had his fists clenched at his side as he stood on the top step and stared down the mob. You will not behave this way in God's house. I will not allow it. You're not my pastor, one old lady cracked. You're a liar, a dirty liar. The Reverend barked back, There are liars here today, but not me. Willard got in another shot. They were prepared to take this sideshow with their snake oil on the road. Other churches, other towns, other states. They were going to take our name with them and humiliate uh, all of us as they disrespected God himself. We will be the laughing stock of the world. Maurice Wood shouted back, Will you shut up, Willard? Yeah, Paul said as he tried to use the lull to get out from where he was hemmed in at the altar. Shut up already. Willard glanced at Chase and then back to the crowd. This was it. He was going to break his promise and reveal it was the pastor's nephew who had given him the evidence of what was really going on. Listen, maybe the worst of all, Willard said, they used this young boy who had no idea what was going on. They manipulated him and, and tricked him into believing this was a real miracle, just as he fooled the rest of us. Shameful, unforgivable. Paul had just about cut the corner at the organ to make a break for it on the other side. Chase was inclined to join him. A few of the bigger boys, juniors and seniors, took hold of old Mr. Granger. He tried to pull free, but a couple of the boys' fathers wrestled him to his back on the carpeted stairs. That ran that ran the front of the sanctuary. That ran, let's say, along the front of the sanctuary. That'll be clear since I'm already making corrections anyway. Let me go. Let me go. Paul tried to twist free again, but only succeeded in getting held with his belly against the stairs and his back bent painfully. His false teeth popped loose, but the man was able to click them back into place uh, with a practice move of his tongue. He stared daggers into Chase, pressed back into the corner. He ain't innocent. He isn't some poor victim of circumstance. The boy was the one who gave Willard those invoices. He came to me first, and I told him to keep his trap shut. But he just went to went to the biggest gossip in the church. All of this mess in this is his fault. He's the one that ruined everything. He humiliated this church. There was a, sh a shared gasp that passed through the sanctuary roughly from one side to the other like a gusting wind. Chase imagined that's what the movement of the Holy Spirit really sounded like in the days of the Gospels. Then it's true, someone near the back said. They really were lying about it all, and Paul was in on it too. You stupid ass. Uncle Maurice snapped. They dragged Paul Granger to his feet as he started blubbering and begging without ever finishing his sentences. Chase never knew the man to be short on words. This time his teeth tumbled to the floor and were lost between those, between all those feet. The pastor proved to be a tougher capture. He shook off the first few hands to try to nab him. They reached again and he growled, You're going to regret trying to rough me up, I'll tell you what. The mob was moving, though. One deacon took the pastor by his lapels, and Reverend Wood headbutted him, crushing the deacon's nose and knocking him backward into the crowd that only made a feigned, I think I, I'm going to leave it there, feigned effort to keep the surprised man from hitting the floor. Another fellow was already coming forward, and the pastor caught him with a right hook through the chin that spun him and dropped him to his knees. There was a bit more hesitation then. Nobody wanted to be the third man down. Who wants some? Who thinks they're the man? I'll humble you. I'll teach you respect. I'll make you fear something if you have no fear left for God. 
Feigned, that's right. That's the word I'm looking for. Good job. Thank you. All right. Okay, there was a bit more hesitation then. Nobody wanted to be the third man down. Who wants some? Who thinks they're the man? I'll humble you. I'll teach you respect. I'll make you fear something if you have no fear left for God. You, you don't speak for God. You're a liar. You tricked us. How could you do this? They threw their words, but no one came forward to drag him out the back of the building the way they were doing with Paul. No telling what would happen once they were in the parking lot. Get out of here. Leave and never come back. You're not welcome here. Get out of town, you dirty bastard. You and your whole family. Chase peeked over the top of the organ, thinking now was a good time to for, to make himself scarce. He'd have to be quicker than Deacon Paul, though, much quicker. I'm not going anywhere, Reverend Maurice Wood declared with his fists raised into a into a guard position in front of him. This is my church. I'm God's messenger. You will not move me. If you try, I'm going to lay you low. See if I won't. The crowd actually started to back off. You're a piece of trash, Willard said, quietly from his open spot on the dais where all of this had started. You don't deserve the respect of being heard anymore. You've misled this congregation long enough. Get out and we'll, or we'll put you out. Maurice lowered his fists and laughed. Who, you old man? I'd love to see it. Willard stepped forward. Not just me, all of us. Everyone you've wronged will take a shot at you. The rest of the congregation wasn't yet moving to Willard Early's rally cry. He really was an old man, too. Maurice swung, and Willard ducked backward. The pastor took a step and swung again. Willard dodged again, only taking a glancing blow off the shoulder. Willard stumbled a bit as he continued to backpedal. His heel struck the large white bucket. The whole thing spilled over. Gallons of mineral oil bought off a website operating somewhere in China, washed across the carpet, oozed down the stairs, and spread a dark stain through the center of the church that would likely never come out. In the last of the mess, Chase Gray's old Bible splashed out with the pages glued together in clumps. The words of the exposed pages swirled with the ink bleeding away, out and away, in all that oil. God's holy word blurred illegible. There's That's where it all had all started, the lie about the oil Bible. You hit like a girl, you worthless man. The crowd laughed, but before the pastor could advance and lay into the deacon the way he wanted, the mob surged. Maurice got in a few more solid punches and even a knee to someone's gut, but there were too many of them. The ones that took square hits, pro the ones that took square hits probably would not say Marie, Uncle Maurice hit like a girl, but the rest of the congregation started getting more punches and strikes in on the pastor. There was blood, and Chase started to feel dizzy. Instead of dragging the pastor out, his flock settled on punishing him there in the church, where he had spoken countless times on God's love and judgment. Each time they got comfortable or decided he had enough, Reverend Wood threw an elbow hard enough to knock out someone's tooth or stomped on a cl the closest knee, nearly bending it backwards. The others would lay into him again. Chase wasn't positive how he got out of there. He vaguely remembered hands on him, but that might have just been his head, in his head. He thought he must have climbed over the organ, but he recalled crawling through the chairs in the choir loft, too. Anyway, any way he looked at it, he found himself walking the short stretch of street leading back to the parsonage that him, his aunt, and his uncle would surely be evicted from shortly. He was surprised to see it wasn't on fire when he arrived home. The timeline made no sense. Somehow, Uncle Maurice had beaten him home. There were missing hours, not just minutes that, not just minutes that it would t normally take him to make, to make this walk, but entire hours he would never remember. The police car sat outside with its lights off. One officer sat behind the wheel. He gave Chase a glance, but then looked away. The other officer stood by the porch with his thumbs tucked up in his gear, hidden behind what looked like a bulletproof vest over his chest. What you doing, kid? I'm Chase Gray. I, I live here with my aunt, and uh, I know who you are. I saw your little show at Brandle Road Baptist and again at Carlingford First. I'm sorry. I My wife bought some of that magic oil your uncle was peddling. My great aunt came to see you at Spring Harbor Southern Methodist, said you healed her of heart palpitations. She kept going to see that Bible floating in a 
in a soup of that oil when it was housed at Ramsgate Independent Baptist out near her place, said the oil cured her gout and dry skin. I'm sorry, I didn't know about any of this. That's what I hear, the officer said. You were up there doing healings alongside your uncle's rantings, though, right? Chase swallowed a couple times and stared down at the dark ground. I believe it, too. I believed all of it. I believed it, too. I believed all of it right up until I saw they had been buying the stuff off the Internet. Then I told someone, and all this happened. I'm going to put a comma there. I thought I was doing the right thing by telling. Maybe I should have just kept my mouth shut. There was a long pause before the officer said, The truth will set you free, I hear. Chase just shook his head. Are you arresting me? No, as far as I know, lying in church ain't a crime. Their names are on the invoices, Chase said, my uncle and the head deacon. They planned the whole thing, apparently. They have the originals if you guys I have the originals if you guys want them. The officer said, We're here to keep the town from hurting you guys. Well, your uncle is beat up pretty bad already, but we're going to try and halt it there at least. Maybe detectives will be by later for that sort of thing. Are you going to arrest my uncle? Well, not me, not right now. Again, not sure there was a crime technically, maybe against God and morally against his people, but not necessarily according to secular law, you see. All that stuff was carefully worded. You verbally said ain't instead of isn't. Okay. I'll have to go back and look. Uh, All that stuff was carefully worded. The vials of oil they sold didn't claim to heal directly. There is even a disclaimer about seeking proper medical care on the fine print on the card. The oil doesn't say it came from the Bible, from that Bible either, not directly. Just hinted at, I guess you'd say. If they put their names on the invoices, then they might have spent their own money. Paul Granger is a lawyer, for now anyway. I'm guessing he kept church funds out of it and put their names on the paperwork on purpose so there was no case for embezzlement. A lot of dirty preachers aren't that careful, but all this stuff read real careful to me. Most dirty preachers don't have Paul Granger handling the fine details for them. Very careful wording for sure. That's when I got suspicious, the carefulness of it. I believe in Jesus, but I also know what men are like. Of course, I wasn't going to fight my wife over it. I'm kind of glad it's over, though. Me too, Chase mumbled. How bad hurt is my uncle? He checked himself out of the hospital about as quick as they could run tests. Had a mess of cops and deputies up there keeping the fragile peace the whole time. Paul was smart enough to go to get to a hospital out of town. He might have even crossed state lines to get care. Dr. Allman from the congregation came by at your aunt's request. The doc tried to get him to go back for observation at least, but said the scans were relatively clear. Doesn't think he got a concussion, even with his face all swollen up like that. No internal bleeds, he hopes. No broken bones, miraculously, so to speak. He has a hard head and got in a few good shots himself. Actually had to arrest several of the members of the church for assault against him and Granger. Chase glanced up and then away. But you're not arresting him? He has a strong case for self-defense. Put a comma there. And with the church with the church beating him beating up on him like that, they may be settling with him instead of going after him. If I didn't know better, kid, I'd say he might have egged on the fight on purpose so they got into more trouble than him. Chase thought on that for a few seconds. He wasn't sure he knew better on that particular point. Uncle Maurice had appeared to be itching for a fight, even with all those people set against him. How did it start, kid? Chase sighed, but then said, "Uh, Deacon Early showed the copy of the invoices I'd given him. Everyone was pretty upset. I'm sure, the officer said, but I mean the scam. How did the stuff with the Bible itself start? Oh, right. Chase swallowed several times before he began again. I was studying my Bible every morning like I was taught to and kept noticing this stuff leaking out, leaking onto my desk. I cleaned it up a couple times and then woke up one morning with it all over my Bible. I tried to clean it up and hide it. Uncle Maurice being a pastor and all, I was afraid he'd think I messed up my Bible myself. I wanted to throw it away, but it felt disrespectful to God to do that to a Bible. My parents died in a car crash. I didn't want to do anything to get God mad at me again. Then there was so so much oil all over the pages and running over, running down my desk that I couldn't hide it. 
I was so sure he was going to let me have it, but he just asked me for the details. He looked all curious, rubbing the stuff between his fingers, sniffing it, even tasting a little. Then he dropped the whole greasy book into a bucket. Just to see, he said. And what happened then, kid? Chase felt his throat sting. He didn't understand why it felt so. Cl- he felt so close to crying. He didn't want to keep talking, but he did anyway, with his voice quivering the whole time. The bucket was full of oil the next morning. My uncle poured it out. It was full again after that. Other elders from the church and even other pastors stopped by to consult on it. Then, after a pause, the officer patted Chase's shoulder. The boy flinched, but then did feel a small bit better. I've heard the rest of the services, son. You don't have to continue. Chase nodded with his head bowed. Okay. Probably best you go inside. Don't necessarily want folks seeing you out here. Could be dangerous until things settle down. Okay. Chase let the officer guide him up the porch steps. The boy wasn't sure this would ever die down. He wasn't sure his uncle would keep him around either. I know it doesn't feel like it right now, kid, but this is this too shall pass. Um, you guys will probably leave town eventually, definitely leave the church's house, but you'll land somewhere. You'll grow up to be someone. Don't let this sour you on everything or every church. Not everyone is like your uncle or that rat Granger. Thank you. Chase took hold of the doorknob, but then paused. How is your aunt? What's that? The officer was already walking away, and he sounded annoyed. Chase almost responded with the word nothing, the go-to answer for many teenagers, but then he re- but then repeated himself. Your great aunt with all her ailments, sir. How is she doing? The gout is back. Her palpitations are gone. Maybe the power of placebo, you know. I can't speak for her dry skin. I'm sorry for everything, sir. Well, don't ask forgiveness for other men's bullshit. We all have sins of our own to deal with. Don't let men like them make you take on theirs, too. Yes, sir. Chase pushed his way inside. He found his aunt curled up on the couch and snoring. The news on the TV... The news was on the TV and turned all the way down. He had no idea how long he had been gone, but it was long enough for ho- for hospital trips and visits to the house. As far as he knew, none of them had come looking for him. That was a bad sign. If his aunt didn't care enough to find him at at a time like this, she wasn't going to defend him once his uncle decided to dump him off. Chase made his way through the house, past his own room, and into a small master that was tight with too many dressers. Uh, his uncle looked bad. His face was hamburger meat, and his breath hissed in and out of the slit between his puffy lips. Both eyes were nearly bruised shut. It might be a while before the man could evict himself. It could evict anyone. It might be a while before the man could evict anyone. I don't understand what I'm trying to say. That might be difficult if they had to get out of the parsonage house soon, as Chase suspected they would. His uncle looked bad so on and so forth. Both eyes were nearly bruised shut. It might be a while before... It might be a while before the man could evict anyone. All right, hold on. It might be a while before they could evict the man. That might be difficult if they came to the parsonage house soon. Might be a while until they were able to kick him out after all. See, again, I, I say this in the second sentence, or the last sentence. It might be a while. It might be a while before the man was up for. being evicted I know that's not the best way to say it but that's how I'm going to say it alright come here boy the words were muffled and slurred but Chase caught them all I think I'll stay right here you look harmless but I know better I saw what you did while getting beat down his uncle's breath hissed in and out of his ruined face in a hideous laugh I held my own that whole, the whole time I tell you that for truth Why'd you lie to me? Why'd you trick me like that? You had the power of heal you had the power of healing, but you needed the money too. But we needed the money too, not much more to it than that. 
the, a little drool bubbled and rolled down the man's discolored cheek. He, st- he stopped and pu- it stopped and pulled around one of the butterfly bandages. It's a real mess now, I'm sorry. Chase thought about what the officer said and hated himself for apologizing to this man, his mother's brother. It was... It was... A crime? It was a crime against nature that she was dead and he went on breathing, even if he was having to hiss for his air. It was going to come out eventually. I thought we might have longer. Paul thinks we both earned enough to get out of this okay. He broke a couple ribs, but he's getting cared for. Tough old cuss, that man. Soon we'll have to, a good we'll have a good place. Soon we'll have a good place for the three of us to live where no one knows about any of this. Chase felt relieved that the man was including him in the future. Then he hated Uncle Maurice for inspiring that gratitude. The quiet hiss of breath evened out, and a small, broken-sounding buzz set up rhythm in in his uncle's twisted nose. Chase was the only one awake in the house now. He did approach the bed and stood over his sleeping uncle. He half expected the man to grab him like some horror movie slasher who just refused to die. He also considered holding a pillow over the man's face until that buzz and hiss were silenced. Instead, Chase laid his hands on his uncle's rising and falling chest, and he prayed. He prayed for forgiveness. He prayed grace over his their future. And lastly, he mouthed the familiar prayers of healing. As Chase lifted his hands away and opened his eyes, it was already working. The swelling around his uncle's eyes retreated until the wrinkles in the lids returned. His lips morphed from hamburger to real human lips again. Cuts closed and faded under their bandages. The nose regained some of its original shape and straightened with a couple audible snaps. His uncle grunted in his sleep at that, but didn't wake up. Bruises melted from bright colors to the dulled yellow and green of old blood under the healing skin. The man didn't look as good as new, but he looked more like himself. He didn't deserve it. His uncle had told him the that most miracles were God speeding up his natural processes. They were God's way of gifting us more time, because time was one of the most precious of gifts, and it was usually paid for in blood. No, Uncle Maurice deserved to heal slowly or not at all. Chase knew he w- he also had power to go in the other direction. He could speed up other natural processes of decay by the same power that gaveth and tooketh away in equal measure. That power was particularly tempting at a time like this. As Chase Gray left the room, he walked with his head down. He moved toward his bed in a room that wouldn't be his for much longer, and he reminded himself that nothing on this earth belonged belonged to him. He tried to remind himself that no one was deserving of grace or forgiveness, and that's what made grace a miracle.